Alright, hello everybody, welcome back to Star Wars KOTOR. My name is Burning Earth Chris, and I'm going to be your pilot tonight. In the last episode, revelations were made. And apparently, my character was in fact at one point the Sith Lord Darth Revan. Uh... It was not a... It was a pretty big revelation. <laughs> um... But my party has stood before me, mostly. Karth is still kind of paranoid, which I guess I can't really blame him, but, you know, it's Karth. Anyway, so, um, we also wrapped up a couple of side quests with some of our characters, like Candorus and Mission. Um, I'm actually going to talk with them real quick before we proceed, but we are now on Korriban, and uh, we'll be able to get to work after that. So, let's get into this. Yeah, what do you want? What are your thoughts now, Candorus? This thing with Joggy, I... I don't know. Give me some time and I'll be able to sort this out on my own. Is there something else you wanted? Okay. Well, can you tell me about when you worked for Davik then? Working for Davik was like driving a spike through the side of your head. Sure, you got something new in there, but in the end, you've lost something as well. <laughs> Beating up people who wouldn't or couldn't pay, strong-arming his competitors, killing who he said... It was busy work, nothing decent. Hmm. You were an assassin? Assassin, mercenary. Those are names people give guys like me who do the killing to make us seem better or worse in their eyes. I've killed many people. I can't say I'm proud of it, but I have. Criminals, competitors, businessmen, police, women, children. Jedi were a better challenge. But they hardly ever poked around in the Undercity. Until you came along. But I never wanted to challenge you. Never felt the need. Maybe I knew I couldn't win. Just like all those years ago. A wise decision, I think. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you probably would have beaten me again. Maybe you would have. But you're not who you were back then. I can tell. You've changed. And maybe I have to. I remember a time when I could do anything I wanted. Kill, maim, murder. It was all the same to me. But now... Now that I am older, I can look back and regret. Hmm. Over what, exactly? I look back and regret all the chances I had as a warrior. And then all the chances I've had since then. I, I shouldn't be getting like this. Not when so many other things are happening, but... It feels like... Like something has changed inside and I don't know what it is. Ah, this is unbecoming a warrior. Let's get on with everything before I start getting sentimental or something. Is there something else you want to know? Uh, nothing more for now. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Let me try this one more time. Yeah, what are you... Okay, never mind. Your... Uh, I'll talk with Mission real quick and then we'll get moving. Hey there. Uh, I wanted to ask about your brother. You sure you're good? I've made my peace with Griff and what he means to me. Okay. So, is there anything else you need? Never mind. Okay. Alright then, let's move. Um, so yeah, we are now on Corbin. I think what I'll do is I'll take, um, I'll take, uh, Juhani and Candorus with me. Hey, Jihani can level up. Let me do that real quick. Uh, maybe I'll bring up your intelligence a little bit more. I'll give you uh, master speed. And that's it. We're good to go. Sweet. Sure. Let's roll. Uh-oh, what's going on here? What the hell is your kind doing here? Bad enough I have to deal with all these other idiots, but now there's a stinking Cathar on this world, too? I have as much right to be here as you do, sir. Uh, what the hell is your problem, dude? Don't seek to aggravate us. Ooh, big man. The Jedi shooting his mouth off from behind a lightsaber, or whatever you're carrying. 
hiding behind your pet cat there. And a woman than that. We should have exterminated all you cat there when we had the chance. What? What do you know about my world? I know enough that... Hey, wait a minute. You look familiar somehow. What? You? Do you two know each other? This doesn't concern you, Jedi trash. Hmm. Now where could I have... No, he's dead and she likely is too. I... What are you talking about? Maybe I was wrong. Still, I think a specimen like you would be a nice addition to my collection. So, what would it take, Jedi, for you to sell your pet here to me? She is not for sale. Now don't be so selfish. We both know Cathair aren't real people anyway. The females make amusing pets, but the males should be put down like the animals they are. I remember one time on Taurus. What? What did you say? You were on Taurus? What did you do on Taurus, you scum? Put one of you down like the animals you are. So easy. Then I saw one of the females on the auction block. <sighs> But those darn Jedi. It was you. What? Me? Oh, oh, now I recognize where I've seen that face before. You were the little Cathair I was going to purchase. But those Jedi came and stole my pet away from me. What are you talking about? When I was fighting with the Mandalorians against the Cathair, I developed an appreciation for these creatures. They make excellent servants if properly trained. You Jedi act all prim and proper, but inside you must feel the same way I do about the lesser, non-human species. The Sith at least let their feelings show on the outside. You... the homeworld. Come now. Will you let your pet go? I'm sure we can come up with a price we both think is fair. Uh... First of all, f you. Second of all, she is not for sale. And I will see you dead for what you have done to my people. Uh, hold on a second. D don't be hasty. Juhani. Don't fall to the dark side again. I... I will remain calm. I am a Jedi now. My lust for vengeance must be curbed. Yes! Yes! Say no to the dark side, but I will have you yet. Ha! Oh, people like you make my blood boil, Zor. I'm sure we'll see him again some point soon, folks. Alright, well. Let's move on, I guess. Nice to see the Hawk still in one piece. Beauty of a ship, that. How do you know about the Ebon Hawk? Ah, I've seen this little ship before plenty of times. Used to make runs for the Exchange, didn't it? Korriban's nice and remote. The kind of place the Exchange likes. You don't need to worry about me saying anything. I don't give a whit what you do with your ship. Smuggling's what the Hawk was made for, though. Who are you supposed to be? Oh, nobody special. I just do the routine maintenance work for the ships that come in. I used to see the Hawk here all the time. Huh. Can I ask you some questions? You sure can. What can you tell me about Korriban? Not much. It's a pretty barren planet, to tell the truth. Not of much interest to anyone. Unless you're a Sith, I guess. They seem to think this place is something special. Why did the Sith think Korriban is special? Probably all them ruins they found on the surface. That's the reason they built their academy here, I guess. To dig all them ruins up. Is the Sith Academy here? There's people that come here from all over Sith space to try and join the Academy. Most of them die, I hear. Pretty gruesome business, that. How does someone get to the ruins? You don't. Not unless you're a Sith in the Academy. They're the only ones allowed on the surface. They pay Zerka to ship things in and out, I guess, but that's all closely monitored. Okay. Uh, so how does someone get into the Academy, then? I don't know. There's all kinds of hopefuls in the colony trying to get in. Why don't you ask one of them? Fair enough. I'll be going. Yep. Take care now. Also, I'm really digging your accent there, my dude. <laughs> that sounds like, um... 
it sounds like a phalanx's accent from wing commander saga i'm gonna say um irish but i'm not quite sure how an irish accent translates into the star wars universe for example i heard that people who speak in british accents in the star wars universe are actually supposed to hail from coruscant so it's more of a coruscant accent in the star wars universe than a british one um i'm not quite sure the accuracy of that someone please correct me if i'm wrong but uh yeah there's a fun fact for you guys <laughs> all right so let's talk with these guys Ah, I see, I see. Another Jedi comes to small core, Ben. Yes? Good to meet you. Jedi come here often, do they? There are many people who come to Korriban from throughout Sith space, hoping to join the Academy. Some of them are Jedi who have left the Order. You'll get into the Academy for certain. I understand Jedi who have left the light side are made very welcome. So I imagine. But enough about that. It's very nice to see that the Evan Hawk has returned. I haven't seen that ship for some time indeed. Since you're a regular to our little colony, the docking fee is only 25 credits. That's not really necessary, is it? No, I suppose there's no need to charge the owner of the Evan Hawk any fee, really. Open the door for you. I'll be on my way then. Enjoy your stay and fresh day. What about you? What do you have to say? Go about your business, please, citizen. Okay. No, that is the wrong answer. Again, you pathetic hopefuls can't possibly all be this stupid, can you? Please, Master Shodong, give us a chance. We'll do anything to get into the Academy. I'm no master, yet, but I like the sound of that. All right, one more question. There's a lot of you is trying my patience. All right, let's say you become a Sith and I am your commanding officer. I give you an order to spare the life of an enemy. Do you do it? Of course, Shardan. Anything you command us. We would never oppose you. No, no, no. Oh, do you honestly believe that the Sith are in need of such sniveling cowards? Mercy is a weakness. If your leader shows weakness, it is your duty to kill him and show true authority, true power. That is why the Sith are strong. Thank you, Shardan. We, uh, we understand now. No, you don't understand, and you probably never will. You wouldn't survive five seconds in the academy, the other students would tear you apart. Bah! I can't be bothered with fools. Perhaps I should... Uh, hmm. You, Jedi, you're looking to get into the academy, are you not? Well, of course you are. Why else would you be here? Let me pose a question to you. These hopefuls will never survive in the academy. A lesson must be taught here, but I am at a loss as to what form it should take. I'm thinking to spare them the effort of being killed and do it myself. Perhaps I shall turn their skin inside out. Or force lightning, yes, it's a most impressive display. Or perhaps a bit of humiliation is in order. I could easily strip off their tunics and make them run through the colony. Or they could lose all control of their bodily functions. What do you think? I just can't seem to decide. Why are you asking me? What do they do? We didn't do anything. Please, help us. Silence. It's not what they did so much as what they didn't do, which is prove themselves worthy. I'm exhausted from dealing with their mewlings, so please decide for me, will Hmm. Let them go. That's my decision. Let them go? And what could possibly convince me to do that? Hmm. Well, I guess I gotta act the, far the part, huh? <clears throat> because I'll kill you if you don't. Oh? oh? My, but that is rather intrepid of you. I don't think I've had someone stand up to me like that in ages. You see, boys? This is the kind of backbone you need if you ever want a hope of becoming a Sith. Now get out of my sight. All right, I got some light side points out of that. I honestly thought I was gonna get dark side points. <laughs> All right, so what's down here? Bury? How's it going there, dude? Would you up and... Greetings, welcome to Korriban. If there's anything you need, you can talk to me. What sort of merchandise do you offer? Weapons, mostly. I've got connections. You'll need them if you're gonna spend any time here. Can I see your merchant? 
First off, why so? There's a lot of the Sith on this planet. This is where they come to study. Obnoxious brats, the lot of them. Just between you and me, I'll never understand why everyone thinks Dark Side and Hooligan should be the same thing. But they're definitely dangerous, so that's why you'll probably need weapons. <laughs> Not that there'll be much help. What connections do you have? Mandalorian raiders occasionally drop by and need to get rid of some extras that they can't sell in the civilized systems. They treat me well, I treat them well. It works out. So if you need weapons, and you probably will, it's the place to come. Alright, let me see your merchandise then. Certainly, let me punch up the stock. Cassis Fett's heavy pistol is 10,000 credits. <laughs> wow. Uh, this is I guess this is one of those hero and this is a hero item here because uh, not only does it do great damage attack modifier plus three but it's also upgradable famous for killing the captain of a flagship Republic frigate at the Battle of Jagas cluster he's presumed dead fascinating both and shriekers okay these are sonic weapons uh, hmm otherwise it's relatively standard fare a standard fare there. Krath Warblade. Okay, these are also really good. Uh, okay. I don't really need anything right now. If anything, I might be looking to sell some of my stuff at some point in the not-too-distant future. What do we got here? Last show? Look here, my dear friends. We have some newcomers to the colony. Led by a Jedi, no less. I don't believe I've seen any of them before. Have you? I hate Jedi. And these fallen ones are worse. They always get into the academy, and they think they're better than the rest of us. You should turn around and move along, kid. You don't want the trouble we give you. <laughs> Smart-mouthed newcomers, to boot. Looks pretty fresh to me, Lashow. That's what I thought. Well, stranger, I don't know whether you're aware of this or not, but here on Korriban, the Sith do as they please. And we are Sith. Quite literally, whether you live or die depends upon our whim. What do you think of that? Hmm? Uh, I think it's a lot of responsibility for simple scum like you. You couldn't find your backside with both hands and your friends. <laughs> How precocious. I think this one tried to make a joke, don't you? I didn't think it was funny. I did. Neither did I. A brave face, perhaps, but I'm more interested in being amused at the moment, I think. What do you say? Amuse us. Make us laugh, and we might just consider allowing you to live. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm actually going to give this a try. Um, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so these two Mandalorians are out in the woods. Go on. One of them collapses. He doesn't seem to be breathing and his eyes are glazed. The other Mandalorian takes out his communicator and contacts his commander. I've heard this one before. I think... Quiet! He gasps. My partner's collapsed, I don't know what to do! After a moment, the commander responds, Okay, calm down, I can help. And then? First, let's make sure your partner is dead. There's a silence and a blaster shot is heard. Back on the communicator, the Mandalorian asks, Okay, now what? It would be more realistic if the commander just shot them both. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny! <laughs> Good one! Yes, I suppose that wasn't too bad. All right then, my friend. You've done as you were asked. Perhaps we will meet again. Boy, I sure hope not. <laughs> All right, so what do we got here? Oh, this is new. I've never seen these two before. Uh, this must be restored content. Access to the civilian quarters in the Zerka mining facility is temporarily restricted whilst this door is under maintenance. Door to Dresh Day civilian quarters? I've never seen this before. Is this, um... I think this is either restored content or something else, but, um, I don't know, so... Let's move on for right now. We'll come back. How's it going there, schmucko? Greetings. You've heard of that awful business on Idean, yes? Our corporate outpost there has been destroyed by the Wookiee savages. This could put back the use of Wookiee labor considerably. We may even have to abandon the planet completely. Ah, well, what can you do? Sorry. Was there something you needed? 
Yeah, real shame about that. See, I may have kind of sort of caused all that. Anyway, what does Zerka offer here on Korriban? We do some mining here and are responsible for local shipping and support of the Sith on Korriban. Our starport is mostly just freighters and such, but we do get many travelers that come here to learn from the Sith. This office is actually our administrative headquarters for this region. Rather inauspicious, isn't it? We offer good prices here to those traders that keep the colony supplied. If you're in need of anything, this is the place to come. Okay, Zerka worked with the Sith? Well, why not? This is Sith space now, and the company has to survive regardless of who is in charge. The Republic, the Sith, eh, the economy has to keep going. Now, was there anything else? All right, uh, well, let me see what you got to offer then, I guess. You certainly can. Allow me to punch up our stock. All right, so, wow, lots of supplies here. Nice. Uh, lots of repair kits, antidote kits, med packs, security spikes. Exar Kuhn's light battle suit. Interesting. Um, unfortunately, if I wear armor, it'll restrict my force powers, and I really don't want that. Uh, so let me see what else you got here. Uh, Verpine Bond Gauntlets? I don't think I've ever seen these before. Uh, Demolitions plus six. Not bad. Okay. So what about this? Ocular Enhancer. Uh, Dexterity plus one. Resistance to sonic damage. Cool. Uh, Iriadu Stealth Unit. Stealth plus six. Wow. That's good. Advanced Stealth Unit and Sound Dampening Stealth Unit. I'm going to buy this only for now. And the reasons for that will become clear later on in this in this Let's Play. There's a Sith Regenerator here. Regeneration 2. Now, let's see. Extensively used by Sith Intelligence operatives, this implant stimulates cell replication of the user's body, allowing wounds to be healed quickly and easily. It is most frequently used on operatives operating behind enemy lines for extended periods where medical treatment is not normally available. 8,500 credits, and it requires implant level 3. Now, let me see something real quick here. Am I even relatively close to that? Uh... I'm only at implant level one. Okay, so I'm going to hold off on getting that for now, but uh, that's kind of why I've been gearing up towards getting implants. So, okay, let's move forward. Uh, you can conduct business at our office if you wish. Okay. Is that it? A couple prospective Sith and citizens here. Okay. Uh, yep, nothing else to see. Let's move forward. Lurs Kesh. Okay, let's take a look at you. How's it going there, pal? You there, human. You are the one flying the Ebon Hawk now. I saw you disembarking earlier. Yes, the Ebon Hawk is my ship. Is that so? Whoa, you can tell Dadak that my people are spitting plasma over this. We've been waiting for this shipment for a month now. I suppose we should be grateful that that shipment survived terrorists at all, though, right? Anyway, hand it over and let's finish this. Hand over what? What are you talking about? Wait a minute. Don't you work for Davik? How is it that you happen to be flying the Ebon Hawk anyway? Uh... Look, I don't want any trouble, okay? I'm not here to give you any trouble, human. The people I represent and Davik had an arrangement. I just want to know what the, sa uh, what the status of it is. Uh... Well, Davik's dead, I guess. I, pres I stole the Ebon Hawk from him. Well, when the planet explodes, you gotta expect a few changes, I guess. Davik's dead, huh? Maybe you can still help me with something. We'd arranged for several kilograms of spice to be shipped to us here aboard the Ebon Hawk. Perhaps Davik left it on board. I suspect if it is, it would be in the container we gave him, locked and requiring a code. Might you have seen such a thing, human? Uh, I may have. How much is it worth for you? One thousand credits. And yeah, perhaps more if you're interested. What do you say to that? All right, I guess I could take a look for it. Excellent. Set the code in the container to red 47. When you get the spice, bring it to me here. I'll wait for you. All right, I'll do that right now. BRB, guys. All right, so here's the container. The secret compartment is still locked. Enter access code red 47. The second compartment is now unlocked. Spice. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Alright, so let's get this to Lurz. I'll, I'll, uh... Actually, 
Actually, you know what? I'm gonna upgrade my lightsaber a little bit before I head back out, so I'll see you guys in a moment. Alright, so I switched out uh, Kanders with Jolie. I'm gonna upgrade him a little bit and see if we can proceed forward from there. Uh, I'll give you Master Speed, and that's it. Sweet. Okay, Lars, I got your spice for you. There you are. Do you have the spice, human? Yes, I do. So you do. That does indeed look like the amount that Davik promised. Very well. 1,000 credits is yours in exchange for the spice. I could persuade him to go a little higher than that. I don't work for a Davik, remember? I want more. I suppose we should count ourselves fortunate that you're here to deliver Don Davik's promise at all. 1,500 credits, human, but no more. Here you are. A drive a hard bargain, human. Now let me take the spice off your hands. My employers will be most pleased. Tell me, might you be interested in earning more credits? Maybe. Tell me more. It's a simple courier mission. Mode of the hut on Tatooine awaits delivery of a box that I hold. The spice was his, and the box is for payment. There's no danger involved, human, so long as you do not attempt to open the box yourself. I'm sure Mota will pay you what was promised to death for the delivery. I believe 2,000 credits was the agreed upon sum. Why don't you just bring the box to him yourself? I suppose I'd eventually have to, should you refuse. But you're already here, and you have a ship. It's most convenient to have you deliver the box. Alright, what if I open the box? Never open the box. Opening the box would be horribly bad. Well, what would happen? Is it a bomb? It's not a bomb. Just don't open it. That's all I can say. It represents no danger so long as it remains closed. Alright, I'll do it. Very good. I will have some of my workers load the box onto the Ebon Hawk for you. It'll be waiting there. Remember, do not open the box. Now I must go. My employers, thank you for your assistance. Whoa, what's this? Sentient, you look the capable sword and I have a great need for some help. Please, speak with me. Trix Kelyut. Interesting. Okay, uh... Let me talk with some of the locals here first and... Oh, okay. I must be on my way to Sentient. My ship leaves very soon. What's in this crate? I think, uh... Let's see, 150 credits, repair kit, and parts. I think this is the owner of the cantina that I was told about on Tatooine. <laughs> Greetings, Sentient. You are the owner of the Ebon Hawk, yes? Or its latest owner, at least. I wanted to meet you. <laughs> I am Mika Doran, manager of this establishment. Is there something you're needing, Sentient? The owner of the Ebon Hawk is always welcome to Dredge Day Cantina. Yep, okay, I thought so. Ziagrom says you sell special items. <laughs> yes, to the right buyer. Traditionally, the owner of the Ebon Hawk has been the contact for all my transactions, but in the past, the owner was always affiliated with the exchange. That was why Ziagram did not approach you earlier. We had no idea who you were, or if he wanted to do business with you. Of course, that's all changed now, Lord Revan. Well, what kind of things do you have for sale? Let's get right to business, of course. I carry only the rarest of items. Expensive, yes, but worth every credit. Weapons, armor, equipment, I carry a little of everything. The previous owners of the Ebon Hawk would often resell them the items they purchased. But in your case, I imagine you might find more than a few of them quite useful against your old apprentice. Let me see it. I'm sure you'll find my selection to be very interesting. I'm sure I will. Let's see, 10 life support packs, okay. For pine fiber mesh. Wow, that's, al that's almost 6,400 credits. Looks neat, though. Modern in alloy heavy suit, okay. Jurgen Kalta's power suit, 15,000 credits, but defense bonus of 10, uh, and some good resistance against cold fire and sonics, and it's upgradable too. Nice. Let me take a look at the other stuff that he's got here. Interface visor, 2250 credits, but also very good for computer use, emotions, and security. Stabilizer mask, mind affecting, makes you immune to that. And saves all plus two. Very cool. Cardio power system. Constitution plus four. Wow. That's pretty good. And this is dexterity plus four. Okay. And here's the Navardan regenerator. Okay. Wait. 
Why is this one more expensive than the Sith Regenerator? Because the Sith Generator is only 8,500 credits. This is one. This is 12,750. But it gives you the same thing. Why is that? Never mind. <laughs> and some other odds and ends. Okay. Um, nice. I don't really need anything right now, though. Who's Toll App Card? You as... You're a Pazak player. I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> Who's this guy? Drix Kelwit. Kelwit. I'm grateful, Sentient. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Drix Kelwit. A crew member on a trading ship named the Orion. Uh... I think I know where this is going, guys. Um, okay. I'm Chris. Pleased to meet you. I'm in need of your help. I'm currently in a business negotiation with... Please continue. With an organization called The Exchange. I'm sure you've heard of them, yes? Smugglers, murderers, mercenaries. Yeah, The Exchange are scum. That is The Exchange I know. I was scheduled to represent the Orion in a meeting with one of the Exchange's newest and most ruthless of members, Damon Drexel, a man who himself was once the Orion's captain. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the delivery of a certain merchandise that Damon Drexel, whilst his captain, had promised to deliver to his allies in the Exchange as a token of his gratitude. The Orion's new captain has now decided that it would no longer be appropriate of us to deliver that merchandise. And what exactly is this merchandise? The merchandise is an item of great importance. Beyond that, I can't say more. Why do you need me? Damon Drexel fully expects that he, we will conform to his demands and relinquish to him the merchandise. When he learns that we have decided against that, he will not be pleased. This is why we need someone to take my place and weather the consequences of his anger. Someone like you. Where will this meeting take place? The meeting was arranged to take place in the outer rim world of Tatooine. There you will be safe from the prying eyes of the Republic or the Sith. I was just on Tatooine for God's sakes. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'll meet with Damon Drexel and then return with his response. Thank you for your help, Chris. A reward will await you on your return. A favor for a Rodian. You have met a Rodian named Drix Kelut. A crew member of a trading ship named the Orion, and have agreed to represent him in a meeting with one of the exchange's newest and most and most ruthless of members, Damon Drexel. As Drix Kilut's representative, you are expected to meet with Damon Drexel on Tatooine, and then inform him that the Orion no longer wishes to deliver him an item only referred to as the merchandise. Okay, and the other thing, upon turning over the spice stillers, he offered you further employment. I was actually going to hold off on this until after we finish Corban, but I think I know where this quest is going, so I'm going to do this now. But we did get our first glimpse of Tatooine, though, so... Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. We did get our first glimpse of Korriban, though, so... And I have a feeling that, that we're going to be coming back over here once this other quest that we're doing is done. So, okay, let's get moving. Alright, so we're back in Anchorhead. Now let's see where this uh, David Drexel guy is. Exchange thugs and exchange war droids. Oh, this looks promising. Alright, let's get this over with. Go away. I uh, neither the time nor the patience to indulge you. Neither do I have the time or the patience to deal with your attitude, Damon Drexel. How do you know that name? Are you part of the surveillance team? I'm here on behalf of the Rodian Drix Kelut. I'm attending this meeting in his place. I had known that the Rodian was a fool, but not that he was also a coward. It seems his new captain has become soft on his crew and weakness his form where there was once strength. He has his reasons, I assure you. And this topic is no longer worthy of our discussion. Shall we move on to more pressing matters? I assume that the Rodian has informed you of the situation. He is to relinquish to me the item of great importance that I was scheduled to deliver an associate of mine while I was still the Orion's captain. It's a simple transaction, nothing more. Oh, I'm well aware of the details, my dude. 
Then our business is now concluded. The Orion will deliver the merchandise to the agreed location, and I will deposit a generous sum of credits into one of the Orion's Narshada bank accounts. Um. Well, I'm afraid that that's uh, part of why I'm here, dude. That's not going to be happening. The Orion has decided that they would rather keep the merchandise than hand it off to over to the exchange. Then I can only assume that the Orion's captain has at last discovered the true nature of the merchandise he carries on this ship. I see now why Drix Kellut was afraid to confront uh, was afraid to confront me. But ultimately, it's of no consequence. He can't hide from me forever. Where is Drix? Well, like you said, our business is concluded. It's time for me to depart. And you leave me a little choice. Men, attack! Ah. There we go. Ugh. You aren't just the Rodeed's replacement, you're a damn Jedi! This hadn't turned out as I expected. There's only death for me here. A thousand credits and a Vira blade. Nice. Okay. What did you have? Another thousand credits and a Vibro double blade. What else? Another thousand credits and a Vibro blade and a Mandalorian blaster. Oh, nice. And what about you? Another thousand credits and a Mandalorian blaster. Nice. Okay. <sighs> Okay. Well, that was fun. So I guess now I have to go back to Korriban and tell, uh, and tell Drex th that uh, things went a little south. But before we go back to Korriban, uh, my curiosity is getting the better of me here. The mysterious box. Uh, do I wish to open the box? Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I'll probably find a secret string in there that reveals that embarrassing picture of Spongebob at that Christmas party. Let's take a look. Uh-oh. Uh... Uh... What the hell is this? Uh... What? Is this all, the, all there is over here? What does that say? Uh, I, can, I can't make out the text on that. Uh... Rakatan? Rakatan, okay. What, what, what? Something else come into my prison already? So very long a time and nothing. Then in the span of mere months, three in a row. What's your luck? Well, let's have a look at you. Hmm. Biped, more or less symmetrical. Far less hair than the last one. Opposable digits, mostly water, eh? I suppose you have to do. I'll have to do for what? Huh? For a body, of course. I don't want to remain in this prison forever. No, no, no. I'm a prisoner here, as are you. Yes, indeed. Though I suspect by accident rather than by sentence, yes? I was put here on purpose. My own people put our criminals in little cages like this. Well, our minds, anyway. For really terrible criminals like me, our mind gets locked away forever. 
How long have I been here now? Mm, one, four, no, no, longer than that. I've never been very good with numbers. This is a prison? Can you think of a better prison than one without walls? What does your species use? Cages, I guess. You just said three in a row earlier. Have there been others besides me? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Two others of entirely different species visit me before you. I couldn't speak with them like I can with you, however. They eventually grew angry and ran off into the whiteness. If you go far enough out, you might find them. But I wouldn't recommend it. They're likely quite mad. All this whiteness can do that to you, you know? That'll drive you mad, mad, mad if you let it. What did you do to get in prison here? I led a war. Well, a rebellion, really, though the details would hardly interest you. Many of my kind died, and I'm responsible. Or so they said. Okay. Now for the question of the day. Is there no way out of here? Well, now that is the most interesting question. Yes, 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 indeed. I've been here long enough to ponder that. How many years now? A thousand? Ten thousand? Bah. I can never remember the numbers, even when I kept track. The point is that I know a way out of this clever little prison. Interesting that, wouldn't you say? Out to where? If you get out of here, you're probably, your body's probably dead. How clever of you to realize that. Indeed, you are correct. Your body, however, is not. Now, before you go off getting all excited and defensive, let me tell you that I can't go jumping into your body without your willing agreement. Conversely, you can't go jumping back into the bo your body without my knowledge. This leads us at something of an impasse, wouldn't you agree? So what do you suggest? Actually, how do I know you're not lying to me? Don't hang it's like this, dear sentient. If you like, we can spend the next thousand years debating. You want out, I want out. It could go on and on. Now, unless your species is remarkably long-lived, I doubt your body has a thousand years. And frankly, I doubt either of us is going to convince the other of anything, yes? So why waste time? A simple competition between the two of us, and we settle the matter. You win, you go free. I win, I go free, yes? And how do I know I can trust you? You have no reason not to trust me now. If I were to betray you, then you would never trust me again. And we'd be stuck here arguing forever. It only takes once. I suppose that's true. But if you won and I did not release you, there would never be another chance for me to escape anyway, would there? You would never agree to it. That's a fair point. Hence, I may as well let you go if you win. It is my one and only opportunity for freedom. This sounds deceptively simple. Does it? In truth, I've had a long time to think of it over. You can take your time thinking about it yourself, but why? Alright, so what kind of competition do you mean? I have little clue as to which activities you are superior at. You are at the same disadvantage with me, I would suspect. So the best game is one of the mine. An exchange of riddles, perhaps. The first of us to fail at an answer loses. What do you think? And what's to stop you from... No, you know what? Okay, he made the... He, he made that clear, I think. What are the rules? Perhaps we should restrict ourselves from riddles specific to our culture or race. A Kirata Saran, while wonderful to look at, will be meaningless to you, I'm sure. Beyond that, I, don't, I shouldn't think there'd be any rules necessary. A riddle is a riddle. So are we agreed? Well, I don't seem to have much of a choice, do I? Now, now, no need to be fussy. If I seem to be moving fast, it's simply because I've had an overabundance of time to consider this scenario. That being the case, and seeing as this is technically my home, I'll go first. Now let's see. Until I am measured, I am not known. Yet how you miss me when I have flown. Hmm. I'm gonna say time. Yes, 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 I suppose that was an easy one. Perhaps I should have used the, all this time to think of harder riddles, huh? There's there, sentient. Your turn. Hmm. If you break me, I do not stop working. If you touch me, I may be snared. If you lose me, nothing will matter. Oh my. There are not many things that keep working once they're broken. Hmm. Oh! Oh, yes! Your heart. Heart is the answer. Very clever, sentient. But it is my turn once again. I never was, yet always will be. I am never seen, yet always come. I can carry nothing, yet hold much for some. Hmm. I don't think it's rain. 
Uh, I'm gonna say tomorrow. Yes, 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 you have the right of it. Tomorrow it is. Fair is fair, Sentian. Your turn. Hmm. What has roots as nobody sees is taller than the trees. Up and up and goes, and yet it never grows. What manner of plant could that be? But it does not grow, so it is no plant at all. It's a mountain! Yes, that's it. Very clever, Sentian. But it is my turn once again. Who makes it has no need of it. Who buys it has no use for it. Who uses it has no knowledge of it. A grave. Yes, that's it. A grave it is, though I'll likely never see one. Fair is fair, Sentient. Your turn. You heard me before, yet you hear me again. Then I die until you call me again. What an odd riddle. Yes, 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 let's see. Hear again and then call again. An echo? It is an echo. <laughs> Very clever, Sentient. But it is my turn once again. I am always hungry, I must always be fed. The finger I lick will soon turn red. The finger I lick will soon turn red. I am always hungry. I must always be fed. A flame. Yes, it's true. I wasn't sure if you blistered as we did, but it appears you do. So be it. There is fair, sentient. Your turn. Hmm. Now, he said he wasn't good with numbers. All right, I'll go with this one. Flying to Dantooine, I meet five ships. Each ship has five crewmen, each crewman five pets. How many in all are flying to Dantooine? No, no, not numbers. Never have I been good with numbers. Uh, think, think, think. Five times five, add the one. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, carry the two. 94? No, 96. Is it 96? Nope, it's one. I'm the only one flying to Dantooine. Ah! Fooled I have been. Fooled myself. Very, very clever of you. You have won. Ah. It appears my destiny is to be imprisoned even longer. Are you ready to return to your body, sentient? Before I go, what's your name? My name? It's... it's... Well, how do you like that? I've completely forgotten. I think I knew it a thousand years ago. I guess I've been here so long I've forgotten. My, that's depressing. I could try to find some other way to get you out of here. I doubt you could help. My people made quite certain that escaping these prisons was a difficult prospect, you know. It took me as long as I've been here to figure out the only exit. And even then, I'm sure it's only happened because my prisoner is no longer secure. I do have to wonder how that happened. Are my people still about? If they were, I can't see that they let my prison loose so easily. But even if they are gone, I doubt you'd be able to find any way to release me. No, I suppose I'll, I'll, I'll just have to wait for someone who's not as proficient at, as riddle as, as you are to come along. I could destroy your prison once I'm out if you want. Oh, I certainly doubt that. No offense, but your species hardly strikes me as that advanced. Besides, I'm not ready to explode into itty bitty atoms just yet. Alright. Well, don't worry, I'm sure someone else will be along before you know it. You know, you're right. And maybe they won't be as intelligent as you either. That makes me feel much better. Thank you. <laughs> sure thing. Well, I'm ready to go. Nothing complicated to it. It's better for me to just show you than teach you. Just close your eyes a moment, sentient. Well, that was a trip. The box doesn't seem to be active anymore. Perhaps it can only be used once by each owner. Alright, well, let's deliver this thing and then I'll uh, end the episode and then we'll return to Korriban the next time. How's it going there, Moda? Ah, it's you again. So is this about racing or business? One or the other, I've got no time for anything else. Well, I have a box for you sent by Lurz. Huh? What's this? A box? Oh, that box. Yeah, I know what your box you're talking about. That was supposed to be here a month ago. You take a detour? Ah, never mind. You opened the box? I did. It was, um... Very interesting. 
You opened it, but you're still around to deliver it to me. Impressive. More likely you're just lying, but I don't care. I suppose you're expecting some payment now, huh? I'll give you 2,000 credits for the box, and you can run on your way. I expect a little more for transport dangerous goods. The box isn't dangerous unless you're fool enough to open it. But I like your backbone, human. I'll give you 2,500 credits. I'll ask some of my spaceport workers to unload the box from your ship. You take the credits and go. Say hi to Lurus for me. Alright. So I'll meet y'all back on Korriban for the next episode, so thank y'all for watching. If you like this video, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash burningearthyfx, or consider buying us coffee at ko-fi.com slash burningearthyfx. It'll help support the channel, help support future videos like this one, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. I'm Burning Earth Chris, and I'm sorry we couldn't do much on Korriban this, this episode, folks. <laughs>If you like this video, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash burning earth the effects. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to follow us on Facebook for more exciting updates. And as always, thanks for watching.